welcome to Show Studio. It's Paris Fashion Week and it's a really exciting day at Show Studio because we're doing one of our signature student panel discussions. So I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by students from some of London's most exciting educational institutes. We've got people represented from London College of Fashion, Central St Martins and the Royal College of Art, which is amazing. And we're going to be talking about the Alexander McQueen show, which is obviously very dear to all of us who study and work in London because Lee McQueen is obviously one of our shining stars from London who's gone on to build an absolutely incredible brand now designed by Sarah Burton. But I'm so excited to have students with me to talk not only about McQueen but also their to discuss their ideas and approach to fashion. But before we kick off the discussion, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves and let us know who you are and what you're studying. Starting with you. Elena Saraceni, Masters Women's for LCF. I'm Rebecca Deakins and I study Creative Direction at London College of Fashion. I'm Millie Cotton and I'm studying Masters Fashion Journalism at Central St Martins. I'm Ryan Northcott and I'm studying Fashion Communication at Central St Martins. I'm <coughs> Elle Waldsman and I'm also MA Women's Wear at London College of Fashion. Hi, I'm Emma Hardstaff. I'm doing women's wear um, MA at the Royal College of Art. You've done the Hobbit now. None of you forgot your names. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fine. Um, I want to start by talking a little bit, as it is Paris Fashion Week, and we're getting towards the end of the season, a little bit just about the shows that have really excited you guys this season, and, and also more generally, I guess, about the, the brands that you find really, really exciting. Have there been any moments this season that you've loved? I'm going to pick on you, Ro, because yeah. I know you best. <laughs> What's been great? Um, I know, we were saying the other day that actually I think New York offered the most exciting things this season, which I don't think I'd usually expect to say. Like, usually I'm really excited about the young talent coming out of London, and that usually excites me most. But, like, I thought Mark by Mark was really cool. Mark Jacobs as well, like, the more I look at it, the more I'm interested by it. Mm. And things like Hibaya, Rodarse, I thought that was kind of, yeah, proud of school as well. There's a few things, yeah. Lots of things. There's lots of nodding to that. Was it a surprising season for some of you guys as well? Things that you weren't usually excited by, you were excited by, or the brands that you always know and love? Millie, what struck your fancy? Um, the Chanel show today was yeah? pretty cool. Supermarket suite? Yeah, like, <laughs> such a cool idea. Um, although they didn't, Annie Hinmarsh do something quite similar in London, so yeah. but obviously Chanel was... The well, pinnacle. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned that. Chanel, because it gets me sort of onto this topic of, do you guys love the shows that are like a little bit of a spectacle? Is that what you look for? Do you like theatre? You're not, you're not doing yeah. it. No, I think for me, the most important thing in a show is it being exciting and actually like exciting the audience because mm -hmm. I can imagine if I actually attended every single one of the shows this season, by now I'd probably be really bored of seeing <laughs> a girl walk <laughs> up yeah. and down. So that's why I think it's so important to like entertain your audience. Mm. Yeah. I agree, but I don't like um, those ones that feel like they're just doing it for the sake of doing it, which I think yeah. isn't it's got common. To authentic. Yeah, yeah. So much about the brand identity, though. I think that's why people love these brands. It's, n it's not just the clothes, it's like the whole aesthetic that goes with it. I think that's why Chanel was so amazing today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the accessories were so like yeah. in tune with the it's set and everything. Like it was such a flowing aesthetic. Mm. Well also if you're a brand of that size or that house and you have that power to make it experiential and a complete kind of universe unto itself, I think you have to go for it. I mean mm -hmm. New York mm -hmm. I was really surprised. I really liked Alexander Wang's show. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was incredible. Was incredible. Um, because it was theatrical, you know, it didn't overpower kind of the textile work and the clothing, but it was still it felt on point. Mm. Mm. I just love that he dragged everyone to Brooklyn, <laughs> basically. Yeah, everything that he could. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. None of you have mentioned London people, which surprises me. Snow Rush was cool. Yeah? But yeah, there weren't any like, spectacles in London, nothing mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Very yeah. casual, yeah. sort of laid back clothing, isn't it? Like, yeah. Marcus and Mila was really yeah. cool this year. I think they stepped it up a bit with introduction of the, the fur and like, New textures, not just like the denim, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. and but it's still very casual, like totally relatable everyday Definitely. wear. Mm -hmm. I really want to see Christopher Kane in the flesh mm -hmm. as well. Like, yeah, amazing. Could, yeah, mm -hmm. but I think the best one this season for the whole like Milan Paris was Moschino. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> really? Yeah. Scott. <laughs> that was insane. Do you guys love that kind of like chintzy logo? No, because the, what he did, he brought Moschino back from the 90s. Mm. You know, Moschino was slipping and then he came in <laughs> and he brought it back. I was like, oh my god, this is insane. Do you want to and wear nobody like a gets McDonald's it. uniform there? Yeah, <laughs> nobody gets it. It's because like Moschino used to do that. Moschino used to you know, throw tomatoes to his own collections. Mm. When, and I remember like in 19, 
four or something when I was in Italy that they used to show the Moschino shoes with the clowns. Yeah. And it was like in the Via Veneto that it would be like, I don't know, Bond Street here. Yeah. That was amazing. So when I saw that, I was like, he's back. <laughs> like a little bit of kind of bad taste. No, yeah, it was yeah. so it's bad sad. that it yeah. was like It's acceptable. making fun of the whole establishment. Mm. Yeah, I think he's really playing up for that like Instagram thing. Like his, um, the pre some of the pre-order stuff sold out at, like in now in autumn, winter 13, which is kind of like. Yeah, it's already gone. Yeah, it's everybody's already wearing it. It's all mm. over Instagram. It's crazy, actually. Yeah. Mm. It's already but, yeah. over in a weird way, though. Yeah. Like everything's so attainable already. Mm. Mm. Like my friend has like the phone, the sad. iPhone yeah. cover yeah, and everything really already. It's like yeah, it's kind of. Discussed. Do you guys measure a collection's success kind of from what you see on Instagram? Do, is that if you, if you really like something? I sound like your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> if you really like something, is that how you would show it? Is that mm. how you pick up on it if you were Instagramming it? Your friends were Instagramming it. I'd say it feels a little bit more throwaway if you see way too much of it now. Because yeah. I think yeah. by the time. I see other collections in when they come out. It'll be a lot more exciting mm. than one I've seen all over my feed every day for mm. a month. Mm. It's interesting to see which looks um, magazines and stuff choose to Instagram as well, because obviously they can't Instagram the whole collection, but that is at their disposability. Mm. Mm. So to see the look that the people there are choosing to come out of it and they're kind of curating it in that way, I think that's kind of interesting. But yeah, I, I mm. don't know, I don't like seeing blurry shots. It's the first thing I see in the calendar. Yeah, there's just almost no point, the magazines that... There are so many magazines who put blurry shots of catwalks up on their Instagram. It's like, mm. buy a decent phone, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting in like... Watch yeah, it. I'm sitting in the fourth <laughs> row and I can take a better image than you see in the front row. And it's just, oh, it's painful. I also think there's something to be said. I gravitate towards collections where it's not just the kind of Instagram appeal, but where you see maybe... You never see the backs or mm. the side yeah. views or yeah. the yeah. detail Definitely. work yeah. in clothing, kind of, you know, it's more craft. You side. need those little videos <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah. Those like and the Celine vine. trousers that like if you only saw them on style.com, you'd never get it. But get the, it. the, the yeah. fabric was just like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So you guys must love it when the shows stream. Is that very important to you? Are you quite yeah. really just in watching them? Seeing the videos yeah. like yeah. make all the difference. Like Dior did a live stream yeah. this year. Well it's the experience as well, the atmosphere, the music, mm -hmm. how they walk, all of that adds so much than just a still, mm. I think. I shouldn't say that for it. <laughs> I want to take things in a slightly different tack, which is to ask a little bit about, you know, some of the brands you've mentioned that you're really impressed by this season, so like Chanel and and you know, Moschino. I want to ask, because we've got design students with us, is that, do you think about setting up your own brand? Is that what you aspire to? Or is it going to work for a house like that? Or is it having your own label? What's own the label. Own label? Yeah. Same for you label. guys? I think it's both. I mean, I've done private client work before, but also there's just so much more that you can do in a larger team with larger mm -hmm. resources. Mm -hmm from working with mills, to textile development, yeah. to the actual time to design, mm -hmm. um, which <coughs> is incredibly hard, I think, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't realize it until you start, <laughs> you start yeah. doing yeah. it. Yeah. Why are you so adamant you want to do your own label? <laughs> I would love to do my own label, that's mm -hmm. what I'm like focused on. But of course, you know, if Rick Carlotti, she comes in like, oh, do you want to work with me? I'm not going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, no, dude. <laughs> Because that's a perception that's put on London a lot, it's that, you know, the focus that we put on our, our young design students is that, you know, you don't make it unless you make it on your own. No, not necessarily, is what I was saying. You guys don't you feel know, that. that? No, not at all. Not no. at all. They're, they're both, like, amazing things to do. Either your own label working for a, a brand that you like, not necessarily a big one. Mm. But, yeah, the problem is, like, for example, new designers now here in London, there's loads of brands that are really... Uh, exciting and really amazing that I would love to work for, but they don't have any money to pay anybody. Yeah. <laughs> so that's very <laughs> difficult. So everybody always asks, like, why do you pick the big brands and not the small ones? Because the small ones don't have any money yeah. and they need to pay the rent. Yeah, <laughs> so. no, that's a good point. I yeah. think often the stuff you're most, yeah, that's mm -hmm. an interesting point that perhaps some of our viewers who don't work in the fashion <coughs> industry won't understand, you know, how small the teams are of the the so London designers. That they're like have. our contemporaries. They're like yeah. people who are just like a couple of years ahead of us. Yeah. So it's really exciting though to see to see that into it. Like in London, I think it's such an easy, in a sense, circle to get involved with. You end up meeting these people almost just socially, yeah. friends of friends and stuff like that. So it's the scene in London is very specific that way, which I think why it's so amazing and it supports so many young different designers. Mm. So do you want to have your own label or do you want to work? I think not straight away. Yeah. I think I'd rather go and work for a brand, for a company that has that sort of power behind it to see the potential and see where I want to take things. 
and then who knows maybe who would you like to emulate is there someone who you think's got it right who I would like to work for? No, who, just someone who whose career has interest you. Is there like someone like you know Christopher Kane, Roxanne Illinch? Yeah, like I mean, I, as I mentioned before, Marquez Almeida, I think, yeah. are doing something really amazing because it's so simple. Mm. But like for for some reason, it feels so new. Mm. It's like it's. I feel like it's something everyone can relate to in a sense. You know, you've got this nostalgia with the denim and the sort of fraying and everything, but it yet yeah, feels so new and in, innovative, really. Mm. So. Yeah, a brand like that, I think, and they're just having loads of fun with what they do. Mm. You know, they, yeah, like they're not taking class. it way too seriously. It's like, they just really enjoy it. Mm. How about you guys that are sort of not on the design front, but from a different type? Do you want to have your own magazines? You know, I mean, you already have your own blog, but do you want to have set up something on your own or do you want to work for, for, someone, for someone else? Because times are changing for you yeah, guys. Yeah. It's interesting, you don't, like, the future of magazines is in debate. So yeah. what are you aspiring to do? It's, it's a weird one because <clears throat> there's so much... Um, availability to do it on your own I guess mm. but for me like I think it's so important to learn from people who have done it who've made the mistakes or you know flourished and all that stuff and I learn more to build my own thing that way I do eventually I think want to be in control of everything I do <laughs> <laughs> but you know mm. yeah how about you Millie? I don't really know yet um, so like I do my own thing but then I've also interned quite a lot um, and learned so much at interning I think interning is just so important in fashion and like buying journalism as well. Um, but yeah, one day maybe my own magazine would be fantastic, my own print magazine. But who knows? Why do you? Whole. Why you sort of? You said print quite firmly. Because it's, it's such a difficult market to get into at the moment, and it would be such an achievement. I think. Um, like the challenge of it. Yeah. But you're confident magazines. You you feel like they still have a place. Absolutely, you wouldn't want to. Yeah, we were talking about it in uni today actually, and saying you know some people just like the physicality of it you can't be looking at a beautiful picture in a magazine um you can like flick at it like flick through it on your ipad but it's not the same archive it and tear sheets yeah and, like, and put it on your it. wall and <laughs> make mood boards from it and stuff so i think yeah a select few will survive in the future not everything what do you think is good what what can you guys any of you what can you imagine surviving who's getting it really right i think it's more someone like visionaire that mm. are very concept based or like a magazine curated by because it's not like the same thing every issue and I think because there are so many good magazines but there's mm. so many questionable ones that aren't really um, they're not giving anything to the market mm. whereas I say yeah like visionaire or a magazine mm. really I think give the viewer something. Mm. No, that's a good point there's something with a really specific point of view would you guys agree? Something like AMAG curated by or yeah, what, what do you guys all love? love? love. Do you love love? Yeah, love. <laughs> <laughs> love love? Why do you love love so much? I think it's because of the balance. <coughs> because they have like a lot of the conceptual and the artistry and they have a lot of the commercial as well. So mm. they're like, if you would mix Vogue with ID, mm. you would get love. Mm. So it's like you have everything there. And it's like this thick as well. Yeah. So some yeah. people, <laughs> but you also go for like weight against price sometimes. Yeah, you so. get your money's worth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Um, I want to take it on to talking a little bit about Alexander McQueen because obviously that's that's why we're here. So in two of you interned with McQueen, haven't you? Talk to me a little bit about, about that. Do you want to go first? Because you're <laughs> sat nearest me. Oh. Um, it was a really an amazing experience. The people that work there, they are very dedicated and they are really nice and it's working nonstop and the craftsmanship. Mm. It's like when you see it, when you're doing it, mm. <laughs> and when we both say, you know, you need to do it like that, like, oh my God, this is how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, that was amazing for me, mm. yeah. What like, made you want to go to the brand? Was it to learn that kind of craftsmanship or was there something about the brand that you thought was really exciting? Or well, was it just, just the brand thing? itself, I was like, I've always been a huge fan, but that, you know, that thing, that mysteriousness that something has, like when you see a um, runway show, um, when you see a picture on the internet or in a magazine and you see all these details that you don't quite know what they are yeah. when you see those dresses up front you're like oh my god okay. so this is what this was <laughs> it's like trying to understand that makes yeah, sense. Exactly. yeah must have been a bit like a kid in a candy shop I imagine oh my god. Yeah. being no 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 Stinking that candy. archive yeah <laughs> <laughs> did you love the experience as well yeah I mean when I came back to London I reached I reached out to them because it's not part of the course um, mm -hmm. and some people would argue well you're doing the MA like it's quite a quite a juggle but it was originally you know a brand or house that you respect the most and you don't know the designers but you feel like 
you know, if it's Lee or Sarah, you, the work is almost so intimate, but on such a grand scale mm -hmm. with vision and technical cutting and textiles, et cetera, that I really just wanted to kind of peek behind that curtain. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I was working with the couture studio, which was separate from women's wear, but they do some of the final looks and private client it is. It's, it used to be right next to the archive, so you're mm -hmm. seeing, you know, whether it's Plato's Atlantis or The mm -hmm. Widows, and you, you're just walking by them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that the biggest kind of takeaway you had from it, just kind of the magic of, of fashion when it's these kind um, of one it Also, I think the precision, whether it comes down to twalls or fabric samples, you know, the insides being as immaculate as the outsides, and every kind of detail oriented, you know, the people that we were working or assisting were part of the original team that worked with Lee. Mm. And so just to see that they're still executing a vision and a belief with such, I don't know, it's just beautiful, it's just breathtaking. Mm. So you're happy to show up and help however you can. <laughs> <laughs> whenever, whenever anyone talks about Lee McQueen, the, the man rather than the brand, there feels like, especially amongst London fashion students, there's this real sort of sense of emotion and there's a real connection to him. Are you guys all huge fans and what is it about his story or his work that really draws you in? I think it's like what we were talking about earlier, the, sh the showmanship mm. involved in, you know, each collection had such a strong personality and it was so much about making this spectacular event and um, the whole story was told. Mm. I think that's why there's such an emotional connection with it. You can't just watch a Lee McQueen show and not feel like touched in a particular way, you know, it's they're, they're quite amazing. Yeah, it feels like your inside is his world rather yeah. than like he's creating the world. Yeah, you. even if it's scary or like yeah. it's authentic. beautiful, it's, yeah, and it's, exactly. I think there's a kind of a sense of, you know, power and strength, but also real vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, and that maybe that comes through in kind of the concept or the themes, but, you know, it was so funny when people, like our parents would talk about maybe when Kennedy died or, you know, even the years before, like when Michael Jackson died, I didn't understand people's reaction, mm -hmm. you know, like it's okay, it's sad, mm -hmm. but you see people really upset and then, you know, when you heard the news, like that was the first time I got it and I was like, this is heartbreaking, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but I think that carries through mm -hmm. still, so when you see a show, I don't know, it still just kind of possesses you somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the whole thing about telling the story. Like when he did the show Deliverance mm. that was based in the movie uh, They Shoot Horses Don't They? Mm. I was I was re-watching that movie like two weeks before that mm. when I saw the show I was like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die. So it's because it, like you feel involved in the world. Is yeah, and, and I'm like, I, I'm insane about movies. I like watch movies mm. all the time, every time, every day, all the time. So when I saw this whole putting together a movie for a fashion show, mm -hmm. oh my god, mm -hmm. that blew my mind. It's interesting that you say they are like movies because there, the, there is that element of narrative. And yes. We talk a lot about this on the panels and I'm really interested to get you guys' opinion that, you know, whether it's after, you know, the death of Lee McQueen or whether it's, you know, not having Don Galliano designing anymore, that we don't see as much of that in fashion houses, we don't see as much of that storytelling. Do you guys think that's true or do you think there are other people who are still doing it? I'd say it's true. In, but I'd say maybe it's because it's not, it was in their generation, mm. maybe. That's what I sometimes question. Mm, just, I think it's a shame that there isn't more, mm. because I, I think it shows how, how much more invested they obviously were and how much more they believed in what they were putting out there. Mm. And it wasn't just like sending a girl down the runway. I, I think it's they believed. I don't know if people can tell a story like McQueen anymore, though. No. Because it just it's, there's such authenticity behind it and like such integrity of emotions. Like it's it mm. just had to be like that. Like yeah. his clothes, they can exist on their own and they're beautiful on their own. But the women like they're totally in this in his head as well. Like when his early collections when they're like pulling their skirts back. It's not because he's like written a big sign like yeah. pull your skirt up and <laughs> you get to the cap. Yeah. It, like yeah. it, it's like he possessed them and they became it. And I, I can't think of anyone, like Prada touches on it in her like in a more kind of contemporary way maybe, but I don't think there is anyone like that anymore. It might also hard to be, hard to do nowadays and still feel modern because it kind of seems like there was a, not a backlash, but maybe an evolution to, you know, then it was kind of stark, minimal presentations again, but I feel like it's kind of coming back. Mm. They're trying to create 
a vibe, but nobody wants to, it's quite a helm to be compared to mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. <laughs> well. People point a lot to talk of a contemporary that gets that kind of narrative tag, people point a lot to Medium Kirchhoff and what they do. What do you guys think of, of them? Because that's not, as you say, that kind of minimal modern thing. They're doing mm. much more of that kind of, you guys fans? Really, like, went through <laughs> 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 What do you think of Medium um, I just remember his, like, a fashion East collection and yeah. sitting through that and just being wowed by the, like the intricacies of the like embellishment and things and he's come a long way since then. Two of them, two of them. Oh, I did in bed. No, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd tell you um, <laughs> as your you. tutor. <laughs> um, I did in bed. Yeah, like they're not stand out for me. Yeah, it's not your kind of. Do you think it feels dated? Is that you know going back to what we were talking about? No, I don't about? think it feels dated. I think they do it in their own way and they what they do they do very well, but just not really quite grand enough for I'd say it feels no. it still manages to feel very London mm -hmm. okay. yeah, exactly. yeah it doesn't feel like feel classical like Galliano it feels like very Dalston mm. is sort of yeah. the vibe I get like yeah, yeah it, it's feels, very cool. it feels That's like nice authentically man. them though mm. yeah. it's a polished version of kind of if you were to pinpoint like small emerging well they're not small anymore but London studios yeah, yeah. they stand out in London though yeah. like whether yeah. I guess whether you like it or not, yeah, they they're always kind of on the radar. Mm -hmm. yeah, like Japanese manga meets Little House in the Prairie on crack. Good summary. Exactly about that. But do you design students? Do you think like that when you're designing? Do you think of stories or do you think of pieces? I think of stories. Stories. Like, yeah. yeah. I think that's quite key when you're a fashion student as well because you always have the show in mind. Um, I'm about to show in like three months and <laughs> I, you just you just keep thinking of how it's going to look on the catwalk and mm. how you want it to sort of perform mm. as pieces mm. um, so I think it's yeah it's always in your mind it has to be con it's a narrative hopefully of how looks speak to each other and yeah you know yes they're at the end of the garments they have to exist on their own but overall you hope that they'll communicate a feeling or yeah. a vibe you're trying to get your personality across yeah mm. Let's talk a little bit, it's something we kind of touched on briefly at the start, but about Lee McQueen as a man and the way in which he, he came to work in fashion, because it's a really interesting story. You know, he, he did this apprenticeship, he's working on Savile Row, he didn't kind of do the, the route, which I'm sure, for right or wrong, most of you have taken, which is you've gone to school, you've gone to college, you, you've, that's the established route now. Do you think, I guess there's two questions I'm gonna ask, do you think it would be possible to work in the way that he did, you know, come from a background that wasn't sort of privileged, not from people that worked in fashion and, and kind of, you know, start an apprenticeship at 16, apply to be a pattern cutting tutor and then get a place on the MA. Do you think it'd be possible to do that anymore? I'd like to hope so. Yeah. I'd like to hope that someone's talent would get them there, but I'm unsure if you know. could, to be honest. Like yeah. it's, it's 10 grand for the MA at St Martin's. Yeah. Like not yeah. everyone can afford 10 grand for 18 months and then um, we've been shadowing the MA designers and the amount of money they spend on their collections so during the collection. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I it's think, insane. Yeah, yeah no, a lot, a, a lot of people though sort of have in mind that they want to do an MA and they're just going to do it no matter what. And financially, they figure it out. You yeah. know, they. I, I have a lot of friends who work, and you know, I work as well sometimes. And you get you just figure it out. Yeah, you get sponsors for your fabrics, you get sponsors for your fees. It's just like really tough. But I think there are actually a lot of people who just want it so much that they don't even consider the financial aspect until it's absolutely too late, you've got to pay your rent. <laughs> <laughs> like. That was a good sound. <laughs> um, do you think people, aren't, they don't seem to aspire to do sort of the apprenticeship side anymore. You know, Millie, you said before that how much you get from interning, which I guess maybe is that's the modern kind of version of, of an apprenticeship. It's not the same as apprenticeship because it's not really a social level in that respect. You have to have yeah. finances to be able to intern, why did that route not appeal to you guys? You know, why was it you know you have to do education to get there rather than actual hands-on experience? I think it's become so flooded. I mean, there are even now new colleges popping up promising design degrees, yeah. and you know have companies that won't even look at CVs unless you have mm -hmm. a certain amount of kind of paperwork just yeah. to weed people out almost. So um, it almost feels like jumping through hoops. Yeah, yeah, in a sense, which is a shame because then you don't, you know, there are amazingly talented designers that don't maybe have a establishment kind of pedigree or paper certificate, mm. but it's just as much harder, you know, then you're, it's either that or social media and you have to kind of have something to mm. put you out there. Mm. 
So talent's uh, not enough. I guess that's what we're saying. <laughs> it's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Let's talk a bit more, a bit more about interning though, because you know, Millie, you said you've got a lot from it. Where do you guys stand on in, on interning? I know it's like a really controversial area of fashion. I, mean, I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> do we think it's a good thing? Yeah, it is yeah, a good thing. Absolutely. It's yeah. just the money side of it, isn't it? Again, it all comes like down to finance. It's whether they're going to pay you, and you know, you're working as hard as everyone else is, and they're paying you like. Very little, <laughs> or you know, some yeah. cases absolutely nothing. Yeah, which is I think now illegal. But the fact is that if you don't do it, someone else will probably do it for free anyway if they can. Yeah, mm. which is what makes it so difficult when it comes to internships. Do you not all worry sometimes that you're entering an industry where eventually everyone's just gonna have to work for free because there's always, as you say, someone else will do it for cheaper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh god, that's really. Where the rest of you stand stand on interning though? Because I guess it's an interesting thing. I think you mentioned a really intelligent point when you talked about some of the younger brands. You said you'd love to go work for them, but you know they actually really can't afford to pay someone. It's not them just trying to get some free labour. Exactly. But the same respect, there's a lot that you can learn from them. So is that something that you find, do you want to in turn with you know, some of the young London ones? Or do you find that you have to kind of go to the higher, the bigger houses just because they've got the means to? No, not necessarily. Because what I think that when you're interning, you're just looking at seeing how the business works. You know, mm. and the younger brands, they already have like, you know, all this PR going on. Mm. They have a studio set up, even small, but they mm -hmm. have it, so it would be just that. You, mm -hmm. you, would, you would just want to learn from the people that excites you as mm -hmm. creatives. Mm -hmm. So I think I would, if I mm -hmm. could pay my rent with, I don't know, if I had a sugar daddy or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, get, you see a lot of, like I've got really talented friends who end up in a trap because they sign on, you know, they've completed their degree or they've interned somewhere before, and they're brought in and say, well, we, we'd love to give you a job, but we need you to intern first because mm -hmm. we don't know you. And then six months down the line, you know, and they're working retail to pay their rent, there's still no job. Mm -hmm. Well, would you stay on for another three months or another mm -hmm. six months? And it's kind of a, a trap. I mean, I think it's imperative. It's why not learn as much as you can in other people's studios on other people's dime, kind of. But how do you say, that's enough, no more? Yeah. <laughs> and I guess if you say that, then what next? You yeah. Know, mm -hmm. If the job's not there, the job, you know. Because it is, you guys, you know, you all deserve a lot of. Um, a lot of praise for trying to work in the fashion industry because it's an incredibly tough industry to kind of, to try and work in. Do you guys feel that? And, but does it not bother you? It's that thing of you know, if you want it enough, you have that ultimate. Yeah, it's exciting. It's like a yeah, the challenges. Everything's yeah. tough yeah. though now, isn't it? Really. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a really good point. <laughs> 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 like, just all the, all the happiness yeah, and all the fashion. It's, it's everybody be a photographer. Yeah, right yeah. 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 Everything is. <laughs> but, you know, if you wanted to go into law, that is really bloody hard. If you wanted yeah. to go into like banking, that's hard. Like everything's equally as difficult. Yeah. Mm. But um, I guess fashion's very exciting. So. Mm. And I guess it is an industry where people take a chance on youth. You know, we see designers who are really super young. We see journalists, editors, mm. stylists who are really super young. It's kind of a champagne baked beans thing. You can do very, <laughs> well. You can do very well. You know, yeah. So, yeah. And let's talk a little bit more about McQueen and focus on that. I, I want to get your opinion on what you think Sarah Burton has done there. And, and it must have been, I guess, quite exciting for you guys. You know, we were talking about working in house to see a designer who'd been with Lee, you know, the whole way through. And it wasn't kind of, they just didn't pl pluck a star designer from elsewhere and put it in. What do you think of that appointment? And what do you think of the way that she's kind of conducted herself with the house? Well, she was head of women's wear mm. before. So I don't, I think it made perfect sense. Mm. Um, I think it's, interesting to go from having a, a male figurehead designer to a female designer. I think you see that in the clothing. Um, you know, wearable is not a dirty word, but mm -hmm. having that, there's kind yeah. of a reality yeah. to it, not just showmanship and mm. all that. It's interesting. Sorry. No, go, go. <laughs> I was going to say, I think, I just think you can see in everything she does, how much respect she truly had for him and mm. his path. I mean, even opening a men's store on Savile Row, like mm. where he came from, his roots. And I think, I don't know if she does, but I'm, I feel like she does consider him in all her business decisions. Mm. And I think, yeah, you can just see that in what she's channeling now. Mm. I think that's a really good point, that kind of respect for him. Even just things like, you know, bringing the men's to London, it feels very much like she's trying to bring the band back yeah. to what it's about. Mm. But it's interesting that you, you said, you know, like she was the head of women's, so it's very natural because I agree with you, it was very natural and it made sense, but it's quite rare actually to see that promote from within strategy. Mm. You know, fashion likes to pluck and pluck stars yeah. and move them around. Yeah. But was it not the way that it happened though? That it was mm. the most, you know, 
sort of unsettling thing to happen was for her to go mm. and take the position rather than bring someone new in because that would have kind of eclipsed the name. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So that's why it was probably natural and that's why she was chosen. Mm. And you you love what she's been doing. You yeah. impressed her. Yeah, she's she's you know metered down the shows, but then like we've said, she couldn't have put on a spectacular like. Mm he did because it just wouldn't have been right and it wouldn't have been what exactly how he would have done it or mm. something yeah, so, she says yeah. it's not how she would have done it either. yeah mm. so I think I think that's fair to keep true to herself because that's yeah. something McQueen would probably want her to try and stick with as well like taking elements of he, his mind that he didn't get to present but mm. making sure she doesn't kill herself by trying to do it the wrong way <laughs> yeah. yeah let's design talk a little bit about that as well since we have design students here because you know we see a lot of incredible creatives have a really really tough time really struggle you know mentally while they're working and either have some form of breakdown and, or you know in awful situations end up committing suicide or harming themselves in some way do you guys feel like you get enough support working in a creative industry is it something that's always on your mind do you think london colleges have learned from those examples yeah, I think there's so much support within the class internally. Um, you know, I can't speak for your colleges, but we have such a support network. Everyone's it's such a friendly atmosphere, um, mm -hmm. and I think yeah, it, it, it you have your peers. You know, you're excited to move into the industry together. Mm -hmm. You're not too competitive. Then. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't think that we are. I don't know. Um, yeah, because you're all going to be in there at the same time. You know, you're all going to be working in various different places, and it's just. It's really exciting to know that what is once just like a friend in your in your mm. studio is gonna, you know, who knows where they're gonna yeah. end up. Mm. So I think it, it's that support. It's not necessarily like as much as the tutors are really supportive as well, but it, it's the internal yeah. support. It's, well, you, you spend. Know. I mean, design school at least. I mean, ours. You spend. I'm sure you guys are the same. Kind of six days a week, or as many as you're allowed to be let into the building <laughs> <laughs> together <laughs> with the same kind of twenty odd people, twelve hours a day. Like it just, it almost becomes second nature. And mm. you know, I think studio teams are probably the same. Mm. Um, but it is, I think, challenging. And you see that more with like Galliano and stuff like that, mm. where the whole world, I can imagine at that level, is demanding so much of you. Mm. And you know, first it was two collections, and then it's four, yeah, and then it's mm. six, and yeah. everything has to be brilliant, and you're only as good as the next thing yeah. you do. It's almost yeah. like once you make one good collection, it's like a nightmare <laughs> it's because the next one has to be like even more amazing. Yeah. Which is why for Sarah it was yeah. like what a huge challenge because Lee was so massively respected. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. you that almost have to step up a notch or something. You know, where where do you take it? Mm -hmm. Should we see what she's done for this season? Let's start by looking a little bit about how the show's presented. Can we go to the vibes first, Liam? Okay. And I want to go to you, Becca, because obviously it kind of pertains to your course. And um, but what? What would you do if you were kind of getting to do your dream show? Do you love it when we get something like this, this kind of woodland, highland thing that obviously harks back to, you know, McQueen's <laughs> love affair with, with that um, kind of rural thing? I mean, to be honest, if I was to do my dream show, I would also hire Gainsbury and White. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who wouldn't. Um, I think they really help her do exactly what Lee would have done and mm. see the concept through. Mm. And yeah, by the looks of this, it does look very woodland and mm. I'm guessing the collection is too mm. <laughs> or I'm not sure the why else it would be there but no that I mean the set is beautiful mm. and even though it's rugged I'm sure it's the, the clothes um, are just romantic and clash against the ruggedness nicely. Mm. Yeah, look at that shot. Mm. That right there is just right. like, that's magazine worthy. Yeah. <laughs> the rough ground might have made the models kind of walk yeah. in that way that he had them walk as well, yeah. which might have been a nice kind of... Yeah, it looks like they are on location. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's the space. There's yeah. so much space. Mm. There must be quite a big distance, really, mm. for the audience to, mm. you know, which really sets a tone. So we're all bored of catwalks then, it seems like we all want yes. Yes. Yeah. some grass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded last time as well, wasn't it? So yeah. it, maybe it's yeah. just that kind of terrain mm. and it's quite nice feed through. Well, the Queen's always next level, isn't it? You know, like whatever they do, they, well, Sarah takes it and makes it into a, not in the same way, but in as they, but it's, it's a spectacle still. Mm. But, oh. She focuses a lot on the floor, right? Yeah. It's just does. like floor. 
<laughs> what are we going to do with the floor this season? I like that kind mm. of modest way she yeah. approaches show theatre. So yeah. Rosa, yeah. She's, yeah, she's said true. it's Lee's thing. You know? And yeah, it's the way yeah, of kind yeah. of bringing in surroundings mm. without looking like you've done too much sort of mm. with it. Mm. I always feel like they it has purpose in the collection as well. It's not just like, I don't know, a carousel. Yeah, it's not just for the fun because yeah. we can afford <laughs> it. Yeah, that I feel like it, it's, there is definitely like a deep reason and there's, I think it does give all the collections depth. Mm. So let's see the collection then. As we're looking, talk to me a little bit. I'm going to pick on you guys that have been intending about how long would be spent on a show piece, you know, the <laughs> amount of work that we've done. I know that's... Know. <laughs> you're like, I don't want to remember. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but how many people... Talk to me a little bit about how a piece would come together, because I think it's something our viewers would not know anything about. How many people would be involved in it? How it would work? What were you guys doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, yeah, for, for us, it's totally on us I would say we go through the whole stage you know yeah. the, the designing the pattern cutting the twirling you know the sample making and then thinking oh my goodness it doesn't look exactly what I what I wanted and then, then you, you go right back to the beginning and repeat and repeat and repeat and yeah. um, some of these pieces look amazing though they're like I think really couture like a, 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 such a hand in it mm -hmm. so really elaborate I'm sure they must have like taken quite a long process to mm -hmm. get to these final looks do you guys like seeing the kind of, you know, we talk a lot about the rise of demi couture, you know, it's not mm. shown in couture week, but it's couture like. Do you like seeing that in Ready to Wear? Do you guys find that exciting? It must, especially as design students, it must feel like the pinnacle. I think it's a nice to have a range. I mean, if you are mm. going to do a really nicely tailored pair of trousers and a jacket, that's important too, but does it need a catwalk mm. versus, you know, the work that goes into, even if it's, you know, like, I really liked the Dior show because mm -hmm. I do think it's kind of that bridge of demi couture in the ready to wear. And you know, McQueen says they don't do couture, they don't do a couture show, mm -hmm. but what they present, I mean, this isn't necessarily what's all going to be in the stores. No, I can so it's yeah. still sort of, it's the dream, it's the fantasy, it's the pinnacle of craft. Mm -hmm. um, what's caught your fancy, you guys? Ro, you're looking very intense. What? I was just, <laughs> just thinking like, um, Sarah was really, really just loose and like, because McQueen's thing was always, always about like the proportions and that kind of constraint versus like flashes of freedom. Mm. I guess, and like flash, that sounds a bit weird. <laughs> but um, yeah, she, I think she's been doing that since she kind of took over. Mm. That looser, like letting the body breathe, and maybe that's to do with she's a woman. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it still has those like McQueen elements. Mm. I don't want to say codes because I feel like McQueen codes aren't the same as other designers codes. Yeah. You know? These yeah. silhouettes are really, really loose compared to any other mm. season before. Mm. Like the, usually it's exaggerated, like the woman, well yeah, the silhouette of the woman's body is like, you know, it's very like sharp waistlines and things and then it comes yeah. like bellows out. But mm. it's a but it doesn't feel like she's freeing herself. There still feels like that there is that, it's quite heavy isn't it? Mm. And yeah, that's it's yeah, it's quite a linear volume. Right yeah, so it's not, yeah. it's not like free. Mm. We like it. Does yeah. it get us? Yeah. You know, we talked about that kind of emotional rush you get in the Queen show. Are we getting this from that? Yeah. 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 The black Absolutely. and white one. I want to marry it. Yeah. The <laughs> 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 what are the are the shoes like trainers? Yeah. Yeah, they're like, With, like, like a kind of boots. saggy high top or something. Yeah, I really like the styling as well. Mm. Mm. Camilla Nickerson does a great job. Mm. Um, the cornrows are sort of <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> that's great. I too. like her. Yeah, I think yeah. he's always in that kind of like tight hair. Yeah, quite yeah. Like, um, well, it's stopping like a woman just look like an everyday model. Yeah. I think that's the, and they've got these yeah. amazing kind of feathers on their eyebrows. Yeah, the makeup's kind of, incredible. Yeah, really incredible. Pat like, McGrath. It feels very wolf-like and hound-like mm. in terms of the fabrications, colours, mm. and I guess what well, these eyebrows mm -hmm. yeah the women always look so otherworldly I think that's maybe what a McQueen customer would aspire to that mm -hmm. sort of a fantasy mm -hmm. yeah, we haven't talked warriors. so much about the kind of animal side of it which I know McQueen you know, is so known for doing so many animal references but particularly birds but this mm -hmm. is yeah. really coming yeah. through you know in that kind of nature element to yeah. it. is that something it's you guys it's kind of like um, the, the eyes with the birds and then the wolf skin mm -hmm. that's kind of like a predatory mm -hmm. kind of victim type mm -hmm. thing which it's quite a running. Mm. Yeah, it's like that contrast between yeah. aggressive mm -hmm. and softness. But it's subtle, they feel like united at the same yeah, time rather yeah. than just clashing. It feels a lot cool. darker than previous collections that she's done. Yeah. I think a lot of things she's done felt very um, ladylike, even though this is very, very, very... Yeah, so I think that might just be the colours. Yeah. 
I know what you mean. There is a m more of a like. I mean, like the lack of skin as well. Mm. But some of these looks, like the purple ones that are coming through, I'd be curious to see what those look like up close or in person because if it's really rich, maybe embroidery or jacquard, or if it's going to have kind of like the light will change mm -hmm. as it moves, maybe. Mm. Well, there's that oh, strange sort of divide between it being quite distressed and, and rugged and almost distressed, yeah, very distressed, but it being incredibly opulent and mm. regal. And I think that's something that she's playing with perhaps more in this collection than she has done in other ones. You know, this yeah. idea that the, everything does look a little bit battered. You know, she's just been rolling down the hill. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, the embellishment she's done is amazing. amazing. Yeah. 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 But I mean, talking about you know codes or a um, queen or something like that, like you know the frayed chiffon and those kind of volume skirts that we've got coming through now on gowns, that maybe hasn't been around in the last couple of seasons, but yeah, it was there point. before. Yeah. Yeah. She's still so got it seems like it's coming back. Mm. The neckline on 25 is beautiful. Mm. So pretty. It's interesting to me that you guys, you know, some of you mentioned when we were talking before about your favourite McQueen shows, but I think we do think of him much more than with other designers in terms of shows rather than in terms mm. of collections. And I'm interested in how not just the codes of the, the cut and the fit and the fabrication go back to him, but also the codes of the show, you know, even just to me, the fact that it's you know in that rural kind of environment, that kind of Highland, that mm -hmm. goes back to Highland Rape. Yeah. Do you guys have these kind of favourite show memories of his that come up every time you see a show? Yeah, um, there was one. I think it was spring summer two thousand and one, um, and he had like the show audience before the show started sit in front of like a, like a mirror panel. Boss. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Be the best. I think. Yeah. No. I. I think that's one yeah. that I'd really. Yeah. Like what a mind yeah. fuck though that everybody's <laughs> yeah. sitting there like having to look at yourself. Yeah, or having to look at other people look at you mm. in the mirror, like weird. It's just mm, a game beautiful. was amazing as well. Yeah. 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 That, kind of thing, yeah, that show was amazing and deliberate. Mm. <laughs> and do you think Sarah does, you know, particularly with this show, she does a good job of reminding you of all of that yeah, yeah. all of that theatre and all of that emotion. Totally. Yeah. 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 And this show, do you think it's you said you said it felt like it was you said it felt a bit darker, you know, and there's yeah. that, I think there is that that feels like there's a narrative to this, do you think? Is that coming yeah. through? In a sense, it's definitely more subtle. Mm -hmm. Like what we with the floors, for example, it's it's there in an essence, but it's not mm -hmm. overcoming mm -hmm. in any way. The clothes are most definitely the highlight. Mm -hmm. Whereas with some of those shows, like the Voss show, for example, like even the sort of eccentric head pieces, were oh, you know, it wasn't so much about the wearable I garments. It was I don't know, like because. Like that dress that was like the microscopic slides, like and the ostrich feathers, like that's mm -hmm. formidable. And that is as much of the show, and they like intrinsically exist. Yeah. I think. I don't know. I think it is easy to think back to the show, but then as soon as you put yourself back in that set, you do just start picturing the clothes. And I think they yeah, do yeah, just Yeah, 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 definitely. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that we remember, yeah, the, the shows and the theatre perhaps ahead of the clothes. I do yeah, think yeah, it, it that comes is true. But yeah. then um, didn't Lee always think of like, the theatre performance he was going to put on before he came up with the clothes mm -hmm. anyway, so it sort of makes sense, makes I sense. think. It's worth saying, I didn't say it when we were looking through it, but the music at this was Bjork, it was back to the so I think it would have really mm. added to that kind of slightly mm. haunting vibe. Yeah, really. like sirens or something, like really... Mm. Let's talk a little bit, as we're looking at these kind of incredible, beautifully done show pieces, about the way in which McQueen um, sort of married their catwalk collections with their commercial collections, because it seems like McQueen from what you guys are saying is one of those brands that you love to see on the runway, but do you guys aspire to buy what you can get from McQueen in the shop? I'd say McQueen as a brand is extremely aspirational in terms of yeah, their catwalk shows, the design of the clothes and the product, and even like the inside a McQueen store mm. is just beautiful. Like the, I guess the, the concept of all the shelves and the interior, mm. I think it's, as a brand, it's extremely aspirational. and. I think if I had £10,000 to spend, I wouldn't go to yeah. Chanel and buy mm. a tweed jacket. I'd probably, yeah, would go to McQueen. Is that because you feel more of a kinship to it as well? You feel like you understand it a bit more? Chanel's mm. kind of distant from mm. I, I guess this, even though McQueen isn't particularly my generation, I was mm. so young and he was showing, I'd say I feel a lot more connected to it as, mm. and it excites me. Even like just looking at these pieces, mm. I'd be really... Yeah. Excited to wear one of these pieces, even it's though I never wear them. Pieces like even though you know they're really expensive, and you wearing them, you would feel like totally different. You still feel like you could walk through a field in them, mm -hmm. like and you yeah. could ruin them a bit because that kind of adds the character. And 
there's room for like the person's story to be a part of the comments as well. Mm. Like with that Izzy Isabella blow jacket that was like burnt with a cigarette. Mm. Like that stuff kind Almost of Almost doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be. Is perfect. that what you guys kind of consider luxury? You're not really interested in stuff that's polished and logo. Do you prefer stuff that feels a little bit more like what's the ultimate aspiration thing? If you all had like I was gonna say like five grand. <laughs> fifty. Yeah, if you all had like fifty grand, what would you buy? Like what's the ultimate I say this because on my first day at St Martin's, um, I did the MA fashion and Louise Wilson got us all, all those design students in the room and she said, if you had like all loads of money, what would you buy? And I think someone said an Hermes bag and it was like, <laughs> they get kicked like, off the call. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Um, but I, I also thought it was a really good question actually for thinking about what, what you guys think is the pinnacle of fashion and luxury. Mm. Does anyone want to volunteer what they'd buy? God. I think I'd go to Celine and yeah. just get some like amazing timeless pieces, like a bag, a couple of bags, mm -hmm. some really good coats, you know, something that, like you said, something that you know you feel like you can put your own personality into is going to mm -hmm. wear really mm -hmm. well. I think that's like the pinnacle of luxury, something that looks incredible but doesn't like wear in this sort of undesirable way over time. Mm -hmm. That your personality has space to fit in it as well. You said a bag, a couple of bags. Is accessories really big for you guys? Is that how you'd want to... It's the easiest thing anymore. to wear. Yeah? Yeah, because you can just like wear black and then a really cool bag and yeah. then you're done. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then you, you change the bag and then you're completely easy. different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's become, I think it's become too easy to have a statement handbag now. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I, think kind of, I think it's cooler to have something. Now. Like, coats? Yeah. Well, there was this kind of, you know, change from having bags to coats because, you know, it's... I think the real luxury would be being able to, you know, buy one of these gowns and then just mm. wear it while actually throwing a barbecue or something because it's not so precious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, so it would be, I don't know, somebody gave me 50,000 pounds, maybe some of those coats because then, you know, you could wear it more and mm. maybe we're not, we're not the luxury consumer that's going to be concerned with how many wares will I get out of this investment purchase. Mm. I think it might be shoes as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially at the moment, everyone's got like, there's just been a, such a huge focus on shoes and especially, you know, like pool slides and really expensive <laughs> pool slides. It <laughs> <laughs> seems crazy. I, I, I feel like I'd buy pool slides. <laughs> <laughs> I have, <laughs> you have like £2,000 Celine pool slides. I just, I can't get my head around it, but I would love to get my head around it if I could. Um, <laughs> Well, if I could afford it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm imagining your hands in it. <laughs> 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 I mean, would you guys buy one of these gowns, like one of those archive gowns from one of those beautiful shows and just put it in the living room and look at it? Just look at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> piece of art. Make a coffee yeah. table around yeah. it. Yeah. I feel oh, like yeah. they deserve to be worn though because so much work has gone into it. Yeah, but that I'd feel awful for it to sit in a cupboard. Yeah, no, like, not in a cupboard. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you can put it like in the middle of a living room with like glass all around it and you can, if I had the lifestyle would wear these guys to a supermarket but I don't <laughs> 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 we're impressed by this collection it's kind of if we had to is it one that's it has excited us is it what we we're expecting you know, it's very different from last season mm. it's Some so different from yeah last really season. different yeah. yeah did you we were, were you guys a fan of what we saw last season because I think that really surprised people yeah, yeah. to be honest I actually I didn't like it as yeah, much no, as what either. I've seen before and I think mm. actually this is a return to something yeah, that exactly. has mm -hmm. more of Sarah's personality, you know, yeah. more of the McQueen ethos. Mm -hmm. You know, last last year seemed a bit jolting. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe because she, you know, she took her maternity break and she mm -hmm. felt like she had to come back with a really strong collection. Yeah, um, it was like it was refreshing, but it was it was just a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. this is much more seems like a return to volume and a lot of volume um, mm -hmm. and. You know, I, I liked last season and kind of the... Did you work on pieces that were in last season? No, I was there before. We were autumn, winter. It was the um, high church, low church yeah, with okay. all the pearls mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, but I, I, I think this is really striking. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it looks like she's preparing for something else that's coming up next season. So it's exciting. So it's quite going like a march to, to the Highlands. Yeah. <laughs> so we... We have sort of great things in mind for Sarah Besson. Do we want to see her stay there for a while? We wouldn't want to see I her have her own label or anything. Yeah. 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 No. Could imagine who would replace her. More, I love Not more importantly, but you know, like, mm. Mm. who would take it's on not time. brand? Yeah. It'd be too much. <laughs> and also, yeah, we haven't talked about this yet because I wanted to focus on the clothes, but we discussed a little bit, you know, you guys all said you love it when, when shows stream. Do you find it frustrating to have to look at a collection like this in pictures? And do you feel like there's so much kind of endless conversation about like, the death of the catwalk but what do you guys kind of starting out your career see is going to happen to the way fashion is presented do you, would you like to think that shows will always exist would you rather see 
stuff presented digitally? What do you think is going to be the, the future? I think a, a live show is really important, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially when you're talking about atmosphere and, and hype. You know, people still get really excited about going to a show. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's exactly what you want to create, like excitement, mm -hmm. buzz, like before and after. And I think you don't ever get that same feeling from just, you know, seeing it in media, you know, in a magazine or mm -hmm. in whatever format. Mm -hmm. I think it seems almost like it's a schism, like they're going further when, you know, when Tom Ford started, regardless, you know, maybe that's more commercial end of design than mm -hmm. theatrics, but when it's closed presentations versus an all-out show, if you have the capacity or the budget to do something like this, then I think you have to live stream it because mm -hmm. yeah. it almost seems backwards not to, you know, mm -hmm. we expect to be able to tap in and see it as it's happening mm -hmm. or nobody should be able to. Yeah, yeah. so you guys feel this is as much for you as it is for those editors sat there, you don't even, yeah. 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 I think if, it, if, if they're not going to live stream it then it should just be for editors, like I'd love to be able to hear about a show through the ways of like not seeing it until it's meant to come out and mm -hmm. just yeah. see the mystery. Between that, yeah. So you don't like getting the kind of half view, you feel no. like... Well this is them. like, this is definitely a half view because you can't see, you know, the way they've walked or how the they've side. walked mm -hmm. or, yeah, mm -hmm. the proper shapes of everything. Yeah. I what? don't think it should ever solely be digital though. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't think a catwalk will ever truly leave as, I think it's so important for an editor or a writer reviewing the show to see the actual pieces and see the fabrications as I'm sure, I mean, look, number three is like, looks like lace, mm -hmm. but it's probably like handmade lace mm -hmm. and it's so intricate that I, I can't get a true appreciation for it just flat on a screen. Mm -hmm. So I think, I don't think it would solely be digital. But do you think there's too many shows at the moment? It's too repetitive, there's too much, too many shows, too much imagery. What's kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like my my like yeah. <laughs> New York feels like such a long time ago. I'm yeah. like I mean uh, we've been in happens. more or less been in fashion week since the sixth of January when men's were yeah. started. Mm -hmm. So there is just so many. Poor editors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just must be exhausted. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> but I'm interested I guess I guess what I wanna what I wanna get to the bottom of is what you guys hope fashion will be like when you kind of I know you're very close to sort of starting your careers, but but what what would you like to see change in the industry? Maybe that's what I'm asking. What do you think is important? What needs to get better? Is it that there's too much at the moment? Is it that the pace is too much? I think the technology of actually making the clothes, um, as fashion hasn't really changed, well, it has changed a lot, but the technique in which we make the clothes, I don't think has changed too much. I think we still sew. Mm. And I'm sure there's different techniques that can be developed. I mean, even just thinking about Alexander Wang's show with the sweaters changing colours mm. under the light, I think that's so exciting mm. in terms of technology, even though it's not necessarily new. Mm. I mean, I think that's just what I would like to see that's as I get older, it's just the yeah. technology. I think, I think fabric te technology mm. is really progressing really quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, like we were saying, what you don't get from the pictures is actually some of these fabrics will have been mastered and you know created specifically for these shows. And there is a lot of technology that goes into it, and mm -hmm. it's it's almost so amazing that you can't see it. You know, yeah. I think yeah, it, kind of like if, it, if it looked like something it. that was like really like weird and like new, it almost wouldn't fit. It almost mm -hmm. wouldn't feel right. Yeah. I think there's so much technology that goes into these things in terms of developing fabrics mm -hmm. and well, pushing it's that kind of I think refreshing when you don't notice it like yeah. laser cutting had such a huge moment and everybody mm -hmm. was laser cutting it was kind of you know a lie and this and that but now it's actually there quite a bit mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be promoted as having been laser cut or yeah. having been bonded yeah. Yeah. or you have you know mm -hmm. a wool turning into a latex halfway through a garment yeah like the Balenciaga mm -hmm. show yeah. like mm -hmm. you really have to take a second glance to actually yeah realize what those clothes are made out of. I mean, you probably couldn't figure it out even if you looked really closely. That's mm -hmm. their proprietary that, information. Yeah. Do you guys find that exciting as designers to think no. of, of working <laughs> in those fabrications? Yeah, like, do you love definitely. that idea of yeah. people? And, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Do you get access to that in the colleges? Do you find that that's kind of, goes back to what we were talking about with money, but it's so hard when you're a student trying to produce a collection on a budget, fund it yourself. And I guess it's kind of frustrating for your generation where you're so aware of these technologies, but. Yeah, I think to be students are the ones who are pioneering it, yeah. really, like, I think 
there's almost like a student feel when you see um, designers now really pushing fabric technology. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to make your own textiles or you're encouraged to. I mean, LCF, we've got laser cutters and all sorts of special machinery, which is part of the reason I was excited to go there. And you get, you know, you're let in to play and develop. And, you know, you, it's not just cutting or draping or, you know, digital print. You know, it has to be more and more technique and development. But then when you're gone, where do you go to get a laser cutter and fabrics yeah. bonded? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, as well. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that like, you know, fabric can be anything. Yeah. You know, that's that's such a student approach really, but it's it's amazing that it doesn't have to just come straight off the roll. Like you can make fabrics out of literally anything. Well and even some of these, you know, like they would may have been accordion kind of gathered and then stitched in place and that's just to make the fabric mm -hmm. and then they'll make a look out of it mm -hmm. but that also requires a lot of time and resources mm -hmm. which is hard to do if you're a three-person studio in Dalston. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Rose said right at the start of the discussion you talked about how you know amazing the vision of Lee McQueen was you said you know there's no one really around like him anymore. Do you guys have confidence in your generation that there's going to be another Lee McQueen? Do you think that we're all are you proud of your colleagues and, and fellow pupils that you work with? Do you think that you have the faith that we're going to produce great visionaries? I think we need to educate uh, people, the general public, a little bit more about fashion mm -hmm. in general because I think there are most people that are not in the fashion industry, they're very patronizing about everything that anybody does, mm -hmm. with even more when they're new designers. Mm -hmm. So like, if you don't have like such label there mm. it's kind of like mm. Mm. and then you see people uh, spending two thousand pounds in a Balmain uh, t-shirt that has mm. holes mm. <laughs> like seriously and then you have students or new designers that come up with such beautiful things like Madame Kirchhoff you know mm. and, and then they can't sell it yeah. exactly mm. is that because they are not or whatever or they are up and coming you know, it's like this is so much beautiful so much so personal, so mm. just appreciate it, but they don't, they don't see more big because they don't understand it. They don't understand all the work that goes into it, all the development that you need, all the research. And you think that's holding young designers back a little bit? I think so. Yeah. And also, um, there's a gap, I think, in the whole support scheme that is, I think, in London, there's a lot of support for young designers because sure. there is, but there's a gap in between when you come out of college and when you start getting that support, so mm. here, nobody helps you. Yeah. <laughs> because you always, when you get here, you have the CFE, you have Nugent, you have all these schemes that they tell you that you need to have to stop. It's okay, mm. how do I get there? Yeah. <laughs> and then, but apart from that, I think like, if we start nurturing all that and start, you know, educating people and start demanding what we need, mm. I think everything's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. there's a shift, you know, kind of away from that fast fashion and Primark, you know, for a couple of years now people have been, been recognizing that, oh, you know what, actually I shouldn't be able to buy a dress for the same price as a lunch, you mm. know, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of people employed <coughs> in both, but, you know, in clothing. Um, so I think it's shifting, but also that then, you know, kind of the return to owning less but more special mm. pieces, you know, I think so like Vivian Westwood's been championing for years. Yeah. Um, but I also think that's why we're seeing so much texture, mm. uh, because it makes it special and you can't buy the same thing mm. three weeks later. Is that how you guys will shop? Because I think narrow-minded sort of viewers of your generation will say you're like the more, more, more generation, you buy loads, but mm. do you like to kind of save up, get special things, get vintage stuff, or do you just want like new top shop stuff? Really? I feel like you <laughs> feel much better in something special that you feel like you've earned than like a 30 pound top shop top. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's so rewarding wearing it and you're so like happy still every mm -hmm. time you put it back on. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting like following these young designers, like looking at their shows and stuff and then actually being able to buy into their brand as well, like it's a whole different game. It's, I think that's really exciting. Do you guys save up and buy high fashion? Yeah, yeah. the sales. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you do sample sales and stuff? But it's important to you to own it because it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. 
it makes you feel it makes you feel good it's exciting to be part of it you, you feel more part of it when you're you're not just like viewing the designers you're actually buying into their brand mm -hmm. I think no, sometimes I think um, brands in general all over the world are a little bit patronizing with the public mm -hmm. it's like it doesn't matter what we do they're just gonna buy it so it's fine mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like what what Karl Lagerfeld did uh, last season with the whole do-it-yourself backpacks things mm -hmm. that some people were like oh this is amazing and some people were like no it's not it's mm -hmm. just because he made it everybody yeah. says that it's amazing but do you, so, not, do you not think you're all seduced by brands do you not feel that no absolutely no. I, I am I am no no no, no. I am not but at the same time I would buy like something really cheap just because I but if I really like, like it not it? because oh it's cheap I'll buy it no mm -hmm. or I would save up if it's something really really special that I need to have but you know, it, I need to feel something for a piece of clothing or accessory. I guess I have a final question which relates a bit to McQueen and it's a tricky one so I've kind of saved it to last. I think one of the things that we've all said that we love so much about McQueen is how much of an individual he was and how sort of unique his vision was and, and he was kind of an odd man in some respects and came from a, a particular background and, and had this wonderful point of view that really came through in everything he did and I'm interested in kind of you guys growing up so surrounded by the internet using things like Tumblr, we talked a lot about Instagram, whether you feel like in individuality in the way that someone like McQueen had it and, and presented it is, is as celebrated now and if it's as easy to be an individual or whether it's kind of harder to do something different and have a unique point of view now when you're so kind of smothered by mm. noise. I, th like, I think it's kind of a shame, like I wish you could see all McQueen's images on Tumblr because mm. then they, some people don't even know what they're retweet reblogging or whatever mm -hmm. and so I think in that sense like that is really smothering and mm -hmm. there's something about McQueen that they're like relics mm -hmm. and for them to be on the internet sometimes kind of diminishes them in my eyes. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. What do the rest of you guys feel? Do you feel like the internet's good for fashion? Do you feel like it helps people be individuals or as Rosa does it just create this kind of noise? I'd say with I mean, it's slightly it's, it's on but off topic. It's good with some like bad there's others. the McQueen show number 13 mm -hmm. with the uh, mechanical spray paint mm -hmm. and for example that <laughs> has been emulated on an American drag TV show mm -hmm. that exact <laughs> scene mm -hmm. and I mean I think that's as, as amusing as it was I feel like it's awful and it's such a shame mm -hmm. that it's being emulated and th all the viewers aren't going to know mm -hmm. that it's being like stolen from someone with such a great mind. Such a vision. Do you feel like people perhaps aren't informed enough at the moment? Yeah. There's too much mm. kind of immediacy, but not enough. I guess sometimes that's a bit exciting, but in a weird way, like the social subconscious, mm. like everybody thinks that these ideas are coming from their own head, but really like it's obviously come from somewhere else and mm. everyone has very similar sort of um, ideas and stuff like that. So in a way, it, it could be seen as a bit of a tragedy to have such a mm. beautiful reference point. Mm in such a completely different context, but I think there's something kind of exciting about that. Yeah, and no, it's, it's, it's got its like ups and downs. Yeah. 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 I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know about most of that stuff if I hadn't, you know. Exactly, exactly. Like, like, we, we've, so it's, we've it's come, like come across it in one way or another as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but I think Being it's, it's right now, it's, you, it's like meditation. <laughs> you have to like zone out everything mm -hmm. that you see and then concentrate on the personal. Mm. So it's like, okay, you've seen what everybody's done, and then now you create. Mm. <laughs> and then you zone it, it out, and that's mm. it. And I you mean, focus. When you see something good on but the that's internet, that's when you know, like, if it can exist and stand out, then that must mean it's pretty cool as well. It must well. mean it's really Which good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But is it harder and harder to find the time to do, as you say, like, remove yourself from the pressures of your friends, your work, you know, everything you're seeing online, and be able to just be kind of in your zone and, and working on your aesthetic in the way that someone working at the time that Lee McQueen started out would be able to, do you guys find that quite hard? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, you, can try and, you can try and find addicted. a way of like, making it work though. Mm. Like using the internet to your advantage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think people in school now or some of our generation maybe get slated for, you know, oh, just Googling your design mm. inspiration or, you know, that kind of online research only. And I think there is maybe sort of a backlash to it, but you have to be, you know, okay, I'm going to go into the studio and not check my email or my Facebook or Instagram mm -hmm. or anything for five hours. Ready, mm -hmm. go. Impossible. <laughs> yeah. like, when you've got a smartphone, it's like you don't even realize you're looking. Honestly, yeah. it's just like it's there. It's, I don't know, it's so much part of in my day to day life. Yeah. I, I don't even notice that I'm doing it. That's why, like, Instagram is so interesting for the shows because you've seen it before you even have to 
sit down to before see it because yeah. even like like a couple of months ago before I was on Instagram you had to wait at least to see it on style.com or mm-hmm. whatever you know but now you're like you've seen it before you even realised mm. so I guess to put it really bluntly do you guys feel like it's easy to be an individual now do you feel like we, we can create another Lee McQueen or do you think that that kind of individuality is missing from your your world that you grew up in and the colleges that you're at no, I don't think so. No? No, there'll, there'll be someone out there who's like got the same yeah. level of talent, I would like to think, definitely. Just mm. give getting some optimism. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Definitely. You I think it'll be different. We just, yeah. yeah. We just you need know. to make room yeah. for that person to, like, where we were talking about before about the apprenticeships and all mm. that, that, that's not happening anymore because you need to have all this paper behind. Mm. Um, so we need to start accepting people like this new thing that mm. we maybe right now we're like scared of it because mm. where does it come from? Yeah, <laughs> the kind of thing. But, but it's like you mentioned, someone mentioned Hood by Air and why mm. that's so exciting is because yeah. it is still this idea of a of a subculture on a catwalk, mm. um, you know. But maybe now rather than it being kind of club culture or you know. It, it might be more to do with trans- transgender or redefining mm. kind of gender neutral dressing. Mm. They're a good example of something that, like, the internet's really flourished there, like, with, yeah. like, promoting they need that. It, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, they're cool. So you think there's lots of taboos yeah. left to break, lots of good work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Your Daniel Treat is proud. I, can't, I need to thank them for recommending you all. I think it's an amazing collection from Sarah Burton, but such amazing discussion. It's such a privilege to hear from you all. A star from me. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much.